Welcome to this presentation on Digital Energy Experience Web User Interface. You may have heard of uh, GIX, uh, G I X. So, this is the solution that GE provides to allow remote access to remote users in a secured and read only manner. I want to start with a uh, a little refresher on how a user in the control room would navigate the system, whether you have a, a full EMS, a SCADA only, a distribution SCADA, you would be using this user interface, which is the, the thick client, the one you have to install on your desktop or your workstation uh, to navigate the system. So a user in that case, can navigate the system by clicking on, on these links, um, calling up a single line diagram for a substation, Douglas in, in this case, and from there navigate the system. If I want to go to the Hanover substation, I can click there. I could go to Reach View, for example. If there are layers in my display, I can turn them on. So in this case, I'm showing state estimator values next to the SCADA values um, in the thick client again um, of the real-time system. A user may choose to take a look at the SCADA tablet displays that you may have seen already. You may be familiar with those displays. You can look at the whole list of data the points, the analogs, the accumulators in the system, you could use you, those tabs to filter just the, the subset of the data that you want to look at. There are many, many different ways you can navigate the system. Uh, you may actually have embedded those types of menus in your own displays, like drop down menus or this, this type of menus that allow you to bring up a, a summary display, like the exception summary in this case. This is a summary display that has several pages. I can page to the list using those arrows, go back to the first uh, page if I want to, and so on and so forth. I just want to finish this uh, little uh, uh, walkthrough by calling up an, an overview of the system, this is a SCADA display that's actually much larger than my, than my viewport. And uh, what I'm doing right now, I'm hitting the control key and using the, the mouse wheel um, to zoom in and out. So it, it gives you an idea of how I can navigate the system and, and the type of experience I'm, I'm getting from this uh, thick client again. So now we're going to leave that aside for a minute. I'm going to close those, those uh, windows and I want to jump to a web browser connected to the same system. I'm actually using Chrome in this case. The system is actually available on a number of browsers. We've tested the uh, Internet Explorer, Edge, Safari, um, those very uh, popular browsers. So this is the page where you would land after just right after you authenticate with the system. Uh, remember, we were doing this in a, a secured way, so you will have control on who you allow into the system. And this page uh, shows you a number of uh, displays that you uh, recently called, but you can always come in and say, uh, for example, I want to navigate. We, we were looking at the Douglas substation. As you type in some string, it shows you all the displays that have the DOU string in them. So if I click there, there you go. We are looking at the same um, substation one line in a web browser. I can navigate the same way. Uh, if I want to go to Hanover or Richview, I just click those uh, those buttons and the system takes me there, right? We are looking at state estimator in uh, as a separate layer, uh, which is available here again. If you take a look, those values are being refreshed in real time, just like they were in uh, in the thick client. And I may 
choose to go and look at the SCADA tabular display. So in that case, because we were opening a new viewport in the other system, it becomes a new tab in your um, web browser, but you have the same capability. You can scroll down, you can use your, your tabs and uh, to filter analogs and, uh, and points and accumulators and so on. If you might be wondering at that point, since those displays are exactly the same as, as the one you, you used to use, um, if, if a user uses some of the actions on the display, what happens? If I try to remove a particular point from, from service, for example, the system will block me because this is an, an action that's not allowed here. Again, we are read-only user interface to the system. Some of our customers are actually using this connected to a an RDS, a replicated data server, as, a, as another layer of security to make sure that nobody will be uh, allowed to send actions into the system. I can use the same menus I was showing over here or navigate to exception summary, for example, this one here with the number of pages. Uh, I can use those uh, arrows again, same thing. If the display happens to have a pop-up or more information that's available as a pop-up, it will come up in the uh, web browser. Um, here's the, a lot more details for your analysts about this particular uh, analog that I selected. So again, all of this is available. And uh, you, the way you navigate the system is, is essentially the same as what you do using the thick client and the uh, regular displays in the system. You may wonder uh, how we do menus and icon at the top. There is no, none of that uh, here in the web browser. There is actually a little menu over here. All of these displays come with this menu that's built in. This, the options over here are created from, from your configuration files for the menus. And that allows you to go back to the home page, for example, or if you want to navigate to some particular display using some links, uh, you could do so. There is actually a navigator right here that allows you to uh, uh, filter uh, all your displays that are available in the system. You could choose to go to a one line or a tabular view of this particular substation that you select over here. The one I want to show you is the one that is designed to look at your alarms. This is an important um, display in the system and we provide this alarm viewer. So here there's no acknowledgement, no delete uh, deleting of alarms. Again, we are in a read-only mode, but you can still look at the whole list. You can scroll down, you can use those uh, headers to sort your alarms um, one way or another. If, you, if I click here, I sort them by time, oldest first, latest first, you choose. Um, you can come in, come in here and uh, you might decide to filter on a particular column. So for example, um, somebody entered the Douglas and Ridge view. If I start to type a Park Hill, for example, uh, let's see if there, there are some plenty of uh, alarms in the Park Hill substation. Um, so you see, as I enter this string, the system actually filters those uh, lists for me. I just want to finish this uh, presentation by uh, using a different browser here just to show that the experience is, is the same in uh, Internet Explorer. For example, here I have a bookmark that takes me to the, the same list of displays. And if I type in Douglas, for example, here we go. We're looking at the, the same um, substation one line in Internet, Internet Explorer. I could navigate the system the same way. So with that, I think we, we've seen in this video that a user would have the exact same experience using the, the web uh, user interface as an operator in the control room uh, using the thick client. 
And so that, that's a great advantage because your user who are familiar with those displays will be available, will be uh, able to use the system in no time, no training is required. The other thing that, that's also great is that there is no cost of developing new displays for the web interface as we are just taking your existing displays and converting them to an HTML5 format that uh, the browser can read. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to reach out to your GE rep should you have any questions or if you would like to receive more information about the solution. Thanks for watching.